And welcome to this final video from Retro Bear in the Gaming Pantry for 2019. Thank you very much indeed for tuning in. We are on air, as recorded, as live, in the pantry for the final time this year. Thank you very much indeed for tuning in. If you are here for the very first time, thank you very much for stumbling across my channel and mistaking it for cats playing pianos. Uh, for those of you who are already back here again, uh, thank you once more for tuning in. And uh, a very, very uh, belated Merry Christmas to you and a very, very early Happy New Year to you all. And um, we got quite a lot to get through this week. And <laughs> we got quite a lot to do. Uh, as we always do very, very quickly, just to let you know, we've got uh, another Mega Drive game on the TV in the background. Basil's here as well, just so you're aware. Uh, and this is uh, Pitfall, the Mayan. Mayan? Mayan adventure Z venture which has got nothing in the box there's no manual this one i picked this one from a car boot a long long time ago i've got no idea if it's any good i can't even remember to be honest with you uh, but it does have the hanger intact even it hasn't got the manual a bit of a shame i'm not sure it's going to be any good or not i have also got a pitfall game for the wii which again i'm not sure if that's connected to the pitfall universe as it were is there such thing as a pitfall universe i don't know um, right, yes, yeah, so it's been Christmas, uh, and what a busy time it is. I can't quite believe where the time has gone, because I think when I recorded my last video, I was sort of like two or three days into my holiday. Uh, and as I'm recording this now, I've got this day and two more left before I go back to work. I've got no idea where it went to. Uh, but I hope you all had a good Christmas, uh, and that uh, you got everything that you wanted for. And if you didn't get everything you wanted for, you got it after Christmas. And what we've got here today is a lot of stuff. It's a real mixture of... Uh, stuff I've had for Christmas, stuff I've bought after Christmas, uh, stuff people have given me for Christmas, stuff people have sent me. Uh, I'm just trying to whisk through this as quickly as possible, which, as you know, means probably going to be here for an hour and a half. I could do two videos, but I, I really can't be bothered. Um, let's just do a quick recap for 2019. What a great year it's been for me on YouTube personally. I've had a really, really good time doing this this year. It's been great to finally, um, you know, sit down and, and, and stick with something. I've stuck with this all the way through this year. It was a bit iffy at the start of the year, then it got better, then it went a bit iffy, and it's sort of like pfft, shot up since, and it's been fantastic, really, uh, to do. I've enjoyed doing it. I hope you guys have, you guys, you YouTubers and you uh, avid watchers, Bearomaniacs, may I? Yeah, I say Bearomaniacs. Uh, you guys have really enjoyed um, watching and commenting and interacting it's been absolutely fantastic I, I really can't can't take my hat off enough further to you guys uh, you people out there thank you very much indeed for everything that you've done um what have i done this year in terms of collection wise well i've done a, a few bits and pieces i've added uh, way too much stuff uh so at the point now that capacity issues are very much rife um but i'm hoping to sort of focus more next year on certain things so this year i did one console which was the wii u um which i hadn't got the one i when i wanted which i hadn't got uh i bought a backup playstation 2 because my black one's a bit mm, bit iffy when it comes to reading the old discs but the silver one seems working pretty well uh didn't buy so much retro stuff this year that's where i was sort of suffering so you know, mass system, NES, Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, cartridge-based systems. I, I have bought more cartridge games this year probably than I have for a long time. I think I bought, if you count the Game Boy stuff as well, about 15 to between 10 and 20, something like that, which is not a huge amount. Uh, so I'd like to try and change that next year if I can. Go in a different direction with those. Uh, also, uh, probably cut back on a few of the other systems I collect for simply because I said space. But I'm going to try and focus on the Wii in 2020 try and build that really up maybe i don't know i'll get as close as i can to it i've also got the uh, xbox stuff as well which has gone along nice this year playstation one stuff as well has gone very well but certainly want to sort of focus on more of something this stuff here which you, i've sort of shown off my collection videos i i do my collection videos as well uh, and just put some more but gameplay stuff but people have, have enjoyed the gameplay stuff even the the sort of weird wii game show videos i did 
like America's Top Model and Countdown and Deal or No Deal got some got some pretty good few viewing numbers for me anyway. So not to everybody's taste, but that that's that's where I want to sort of go and and try and do um, maybe even do some podcast stuff this year uh, coming year as well. So yeah, I still want to do an awful lot, but obviously I want to sort of scale back on some other things as well. Uh, we'll have to see what happens, won't we? I, I, I don't like to make too many plans, because I didn't make any plans. I, I, I sort of said, if I got to this point, and I'm, I'm sort of actually gone past the point I thought I, I, I wanted to get to, so I've sort of overachieved this year. If I get past this point this year, then I've had a, you know, done, done fairly well. So I'm happy with that. Just see what happens next year. Anyway, um, let me know what you, you know, if you've got any thoughts on that, or... I don't know, want to make conversation about it, feel free to do so. Right, um, the other big aspect of this year, which is sort of starts off with some of the stuff I've been sent, I actually got this, uh, this actually arrived on Christmas Eve. And again, I'm not going to harp on about it, but those of you will know I won the uh, YouTuber, small YouTuber, the less than 3,000 subscribers YouTuber, the month award for November, as I, I it now says. Uh, I was sent this in the post from Tom and Lacey over at Do You Nerd. It's a giant thumb, which... I'm sure it's got a number of purposes for it. Um, I'm going to stick it on my shelf and use it as an award. And you'll just see there, you may not know this, there it goes, YouTube of the Month, November, the Retro Bear. And that was obviously way, way beyond anything I expected this year. Um, but that was nice of them to send that through. Uh, really, really good of them. Uh, they did a fantastic job with that competition this year. It's going to sit up here on my shelf probably. In view, sort of. I don't know, I'll maybe find somewhere else where I might stick it down here actually. Let's sit there. There we go. It'll do for the moment anyway. <laughs> It'll do for the moment. But yeah, that was just uh, probably the crowning achievement this year really. I've only ever won one, one award previously and that was uh, given to me. Um, I suppose probably the best word in kindness and, and sort of like to say, keep going lad. I'll tell you more about that another time. <laughs> It's, it's a it's a long story which I'm not going to get into because I've got if I've got if I've got no stuff to show you today, today I'll tell you that story that can wait for another time if I ever win another award which I'm doubt I'm doubtful I'm ever going to do um, right so I want to get through some of the stuff I was sent for Christmas you've, you've already seen one gift which was great for my my friend Sean over at Retro Games Revi uh, Revive what a great guy Sean is everyone says he's what a great guy he is he sent me one they sent me this um, it's great. Absolutely brilliant. Um, just for fans of Basil, I'm not kicking Basil out. He's still going to be lurking in the background. But I've got to find a place for, for obviously, Retro Bear. I don't know how Sean actually knew, but I certainly didn't tell him. But I've actually got that very, very same thing stitched onto my chest under this T-shirt. So I'm not quite sure how he managed to work that out. But isn't that brilliant? I mean, you know, that is just great. So, and it's so soft. I mean, I'm I'm guessing build the bear maybe? I don't know. But that's just brilliant. I mean, that... That made me and the missus smile on Christmas Day when I opened that up. So thank you very much for that, Sean. Sean also was very kind to send me a couple of other things as well. In fact, he's done pretty much nothing but send me stuff this year. Had wee stuff and um, I'm sure there was something else he sent me. Uh, he also sent me one of these, which I know I was doing, uh, I understand I was doing the rounds at Blackpool in the Expo edition. And this is the um, coaster with the Commodore 64 logo on it, which is fantastic. I love my Commodore 64 stuff, and that's going to go right here. You can plonk that there, and then be occasionally have my cup of tea on the go, or a glass of squash. I'm going to make sure it sits in the gaming pantry, where all food items should be. And he also sent me this as well, which I wasn't expecting at all. Um, and um, this is uh, a copy of Let's Tap on the Wii. Because Sean knows like me wee stuff. <laughs> I don't know how he's. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, that that there. Um, this is if you've never played this game, I must do. I must do a game plan. It's absolutely brilliant. It's it's an innovative game where inside this box is the game, but also two cardboard boxes. And the idea is you lay the Wii remote down on the cardboard box, and to control the uh, man on the screen it's, it's like lots of like running game running and jumping games you just you know tap your fingers like that and the vibration from the box through the Wii remote moves your guy on the screen it's very very good it gets you know it, it's one of these games which, which is not particularly um, rare or collectible I think you can buy this for 250 it has gone up recently I mean I, I bought this earlier in the year for a pound so as Sean I've already told Sean I've already got this um, but I haven't got the seal version, which he's very, very kindly sent me. So, 
absolutely thrilled to get that so i can play the other one now and keep this someone somewhere safe so thank you very much for that sean and yeah i bought a loose copy of the game years ago and then i saw a copy i saw the box in a local cex but they hadn't got the game to go with it so i basically paid them another pound for bits of cardboard so i bought this for one pound fifty uh, i think you can pick up the complete set for 250 now but sean's very very kindly sent this through just give me one second because uh, um as I'm talking, just watch the background. It's all right, I've got to change the settings on my power. Because what happens is if I don't move the mouse, the screen goes black. And then I can't see what I'm doing. There we go. So I so can see what I'm doing. So I'm not putting stuff up here or over there. So you can't see it all, all down here. Not that makes any difference in terms of the, 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 the cosmetic value of this. So with the coast of the bear and the game, Sean, thank you very much indeed for that. That's, that was brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. You can sit down there and look after that. Uh, other gaming stuff I got um, from a, a friend of ours. He's very, very kindly sent me a Crash Bandicoot t-shirt. That's brilliant. Um, I've got so many gaming t-shirts now, I'm not quite sure how many I have got. But I think uh, that's one I hadn't seen before. And uh, I've had quite a, a decent year on the old Crash front. Because I got, uh, I think as I mentioned, Sean, uh, he did... Where are we? Yeah, he sent me a copy of Crash Bandicoot 2 on the PlayStation 1 uh, Black Label earlier on in the year. I also picked up Crash uh, Insane Trilogy for the Switch as well. Uh, and I may have added a Crash game possibly to the PlayStation 2, but that was great for my friend Lewis. Lewis, thank you very much for that. Uh, Mrs. Bear's been very busy as always. She also got me a T-shirt. I've got loads of T-shirts last year, not as many this year. Uh, this is Pick Your Weapon. It has loads of controllers on there. And systems, I think. Is it just systems or controllers, or a mixture of both? I can see that. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, loads of different systems. Like, oh, there's an Xbox down the bottom there. I mean, you can see that down the bottom. Where's your screen? Bottom left. Yeah, lovely. So that was a uh, nice colour as well. I haven't worn that one yet. That's brilliant. Uh, what else did she get me? Uh, one of these metal signs, which says "Caution, Angry Gamer," just to go with the. One I've got stuck on the door to the pantry, and there's another one down here as well we bought ages ago, which says warning gamer at work. I don't know where they're going to go. We'll find somewhere for them, I'm pretty sure of it anyway. But yeah, metal sign. Yep, come in. Going down there. Um, and she also bought me, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I'm going to need some, some colouring pencils to go in my Mega Drive colouring book. Isn't that brilliant? <laughs> Uh, it's actually Genesis colouring book, just so you know, so it's obviously come from, it's actually got the price on the back in American and Canadian dollars, but not British ones, uh, not British pounds. It's, I mean, I'll just show you the inside of that very, very quickly. I'll just try and show you one of the pictures, so uh, you'll get an idea of what I mean. See, there's something there from uh, Revenge of Shinobi. The great thing about it is it picks on some of the early Sega games, which sort of came off the old, um, uh, you know, games you see appear so many times on these collect like there's all to beast there the good thing is that there's no columns in here uh, which appears to appear in everything um, it's even uh, i'm not sure what color you can do on that one because it's pretty much colored in already isn't it black it's the genesis let me color it pink or something but yeah that's great i mean i'll get the old creative juices flowing there's golden axe uh, alien syndrome alex kid in miracle world shinobi streets of rage uh, golden axe there just uh, so yeah, that's, that's great. A little bit of fun, isn't it? So, um, but I need some colouring pencils. I must buy some colouring pencils to colour it in. Uh, also, uh, to go on my coaster, um, she bought me a mug with my face on it. My old face. That's a very, very long time ago, as you, as you can see. <laughs> I'm not sure how many years ago. That was probably taken about 10 years ago. Possibly... No, look at the black on the beard. Look at the black on the, the beard. Now it's basically white, isn't it, really? Um, and the old hairline sort of look at that there phew look at that compared to that jeez does need a wash actually but uh, yeah so um, yep they are are available from all good retailers possibly um, in the future but yeah so I can sit that on my coaster now. there we go lovely first bit of retro bear merchandise I never thought I'd see that happen um, and then I'm going to do what I bought after Christmas rather than uh, the, the stuff I bought in between Christmas and now 
get through all the, the new stuff that I can get onto the other stuff. Um, I was poking around Amazon the other day and I stumbled across a system because I was thinking, what systems have I got that I haven't got a backup console for? Because if you know me, you know that I've got pretty much a backup for everything. And the only ones I haven't got a backup for at the moment, the 2600, um, the NES, the Super Nintendo, uh, the Xbox 360, and the PlayStation 4. I'm not counting not ca anything else, but I like to have a backup console just in case. In some cases, I've ended up with more than one. And rather than, I thought, well, the, the one I'm sort of looking at, my, my idea of next year to buy more retro cartridge based stuff is to sort of look at, say, this, the, the NES. And I was poking around Amazon and, and I came across uh, something which I thought, well, for the price it was, I thought I'd pick it up. So for £19.99, including delivery. Um, and I, I asked a few questions about this and people told me about the good things about it, the bad things about it, and, you know, in terms of the cost of it and weighing in. The pros and the cons and what i'm going to use it for definitely more pros than cons for me so i picked up the retron one hd which is for the nes and the great thing about this is that you can play both uh, pal and ntsc um on this as well which is great because i've got an ntsc uh mario uh, 3 don't no, mario 2 which i can't play on my standard one and my 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 pal one's a bit temperamental it could do with a good clean out and a good going over but just in case it doesn't recover from that then then this is something way forward i know there's a slight issue with the uh, you put the cartridges in there so it works with the proper cartridges but there's a problem it's slight issue with the conversion of the sound of the graphics but it does com run uh convert to 720 it does have the facility to play american cartridges also obviously you'll be able to buy the japanese adapter for it whilst the famicom games which i may have a double with the controller gets very good reviews as well i'm probably going to do an unboxing of this one a short unboxing video i'm not going to open it now uh, but like i said 1999 off amazon uh, i'm not endorsed to promote this item in any way shape or form but i tell you something that's a bit of a bloody bargain as far as i'm concerned uh, bear in mind that the super nintendo version made by high picking who made this one um it's 75 quid which is a bit much as a, as a back I, I could buy a you know a, a official super nintendo uh in cex for 40 to 50 quid you know i'm not going to buy you're not going to buy one of these little boxes that it's, it's a lovely bit of kit i will do a little bit of an unboxing video and do that properly but yeah 19 pound 99 oh, come on um and it plays the original cartridges not 100% emulation, but then again, when is emulation 100%? don't know. Yeah, worth going on that one. So I bought that after Christmas. And I'm, I will use that rather than my NES until I get it sorted out. That will probably work well. So, now, the big one. The big one. The pickups. There's been so many pickups after Christmas this year. Um, not because there's anything in the sale. It has just been one of those foretold moments and what you're going to see here all these games cost me 39 quid i think there's 34 games you're going to see some of my count i'm not going to count them. i think it's maybe 34 35 games here for 39 quid we've got so many different systems we've got so many different genres so we're going to get straight on with it and, and have a look i'll try and remember where i've gone on from i should try and remember how much stuff cost me uh, but I may be slightly out on that. And this has all come from money I had for Christmas. I've still got um, uh, 50 quid left over, which I'm holding on to for something a bit special, maybe. I don't know. But this all this was all bought with, 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 with money I had for Christmas, so all out, of, all out of that. So thank you again to my relatives for supplying this. Without uh, those wonderful uh, Christmas donations, we wouldn't have this here. Uh, let's do some PlayStation 1 games first, then. So this is already a bit of a, a curious game to start with. This is Pool Shark, which I got off uh, Dudley Market for a quid. Um, now, if you look at Pool Shark, I had a look on Pool Shark on Retro Collect, you couldn't find it. But actually, you notice there, I noticed on the back, it's got, um, you can just see there, the Gremlin Graphics logo from years and years ago. And it also got on the front there, Actua Sports. Uh, over there, there we go. I still not got that right. That's one thing I can do next year: get my fingers and thumbs sorted out for you. So this game actually goes under the name Actua Pool. It's really funny. Uh, it's got a broken box. 
Ta-da. That's simulated there, broken box, but the manual's in. Manual's there, all complete. The uh, spindle's broken, but the disc is there as well. And there's the back, just in case you didn't see it the first time around. But that was a pound. Um, you can always replace the box. I can always find a cheap FIFA game because, as I said this year, that there's been so much PlayStation 1 stuff knocking about, you'd be mad to do it. So I would be mad to leave this one behind with possibly the crappiest cover I've seen during 2019, and this is scooter racing. I mean, that just looks like they've just photoshopped two people onto a road, doesn't it? I mean, it looks absolutely dreadful. Uh, made by a software house called Crave Entertainment, who I've never heard of. And again, this has got a crack across the front. You might just better see that there, possibly. There is a crack across there. Um, not all the way across, it doesn't quite go. Um, but it does have the manual and the disc inside. And it looks absolutely terrible. You may not be able to see it from me, but it does look absolutely terrible. But this is a pound. And I'm not going to argue with a pound on that one. Um, uh, right, so I've got the SATA CEX. This is a couple of Wii games and a couple of dreadful Wii games. Uh, copyright David Birdsell. <laughs> Love the way, <laughs> if you ever read really, really his comments on my videos last week, absolutely atrocious pickups. Yeah, he knows about it. Well, they are. If the pickups were any good, you wouldn't watch, would you? It was all between Sega and Sonic and uh, f you know Fire Emblem and Zelda. No one would tune in. You only want to see what sort of left field crap that I've put picked up, or as the French refer to it, collection du crap. Uh, so we have got some real piece of rubbish here. This is um, Hotel for Dogs on the Wii, uh, made by our old friends 505 Games. Who This is actually based on a film, and I know it's based on a film, so I checked the back of the box. Uh, complete with manual. But, as I say, if you want to collect all these Wii games, this is the sort of rubbish you have to buy. Um, and it's basically about running a hotel for dogs. I haven't seen the film, I have no intention of seeing the film. And I'm pretty sure we can guarantee it's not, you know, it's not the godfather, is it? Um, the dogs have run amok and now it's up to you to keep them from their pesky dog catcher. You must clean, feed, play with them or else you'll end up in the doghouse. With your help, every stray will have its stay at the Hotel for Dogs, which sounds like a song. I'm sure there's a song, there must be a song for that. With your help, every stray will have its stay at the Hotel for Dogs. We've already had Cats the Musical, why not Hotel for Dogs the Musical? Don't quote me on that one. That was a pound, and I think you'll probably guarantee 99p way, way too much spent there. Uh, one for the intellectuals amongst us, which there aren't any. I don't know, there might be some intellectuals watching. Uh, we Chess, which was a pound. It's chess, and it's on the Wii great thing about this is, is it's fully complete uh, is also they actually felt the need uh, to stick a <laughs> club nintendo flyer in the wii chess game i have no idea why but this one comes with everything's got the wii advertising manual the safety notice and the instructions for chess I, i'm not a chess player not really um but i did read the back of this um and it's very interesting. It says, Wii Chess uses Loop Express, which is a conversion of the Loop Chess Engine, which ranked third in the 2007 World Computer Chess Championship in Amsterdam. Top players are sure to find a suitable match amongst this high-level computer opponent. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? No? OK. Chess for the Wii. Pound. We'll do that one last of all because that's quite an exciting one um this was a pound also uh playstation 2 and this goes into my sing star collection which will now stand at, unlucky for some 13. this is sing star 90s uh usually I, I, so i'm trying not to buy playstation 2 games at the moment but this one was just too good condition to ignore to be fair the manual's lovely the disc is clean the box is clean um these things usually get racked to pieces. Uh, would you like to know the tracks? Of course you do. Someone, someone mentioned a few weeks, few years, videos ago that they get the impression when I'm reading some of these tracks out, I have no idea who these people are. Not entirely true, uh, but I will say I have no idea who some of these people are. I suspect I will know most of the stuff on here. Um, All Saints, Never Ever, Aqua, Barbie Girl, B-52's Love Shack, Bare Naked Ladies, One Week, Billy Ray Cyrus, Achy Breaky Heart, Crash Test Dummies, mm, 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 mm. no, I do know that one. Uh, Divinals, I Touch Myself, which I think you may find was an 80s song. I'm pretty sure of it. 
Um, EMF, unbelievable. Gin Blossoms, hey, jealousy. I don't know that one. Uh, Lisa Loeb, stay, I missed you. MC Hammer, you can't touch this. Meredith Brooks, bitch. That's just not my opinion. That's what it says here. M People, moving on up. Natalie and Brulia, torn. New kids on the block, step by step. Nick Cade and the Bad Seeds and Kylie Minogue, where the wild roses grow. Poison, unskinny bop. Dear. Uh, Radiohead Creep, REM Everybody Hurts, Roachford Only To Be With You, which I'm pretty sure was also late, very, very late 80s. Uh, Savage Garden, I Want You, Seal Kiss My Rose, Sir Mix A Lot, Baby Got Back. No, I don't know that one. Uh, Spice Girls Wanna Be, Spin Doctors Two Princes, Technotronic Featuring Felly, Pump Up The Jam, Pump It Up While Your Feet Are Stomping. Uh, the Cardigans Love Fork, The Cranberries Zombie, The Cure Friday I'm, on, I'm In Love, which I think was a remix of an old... Was it a re-release? I think it was a re-release of an 80, uh, early um, Cure song. Or was that um, Close To You? I can't get my Cure songs mixed up there. And Wet Wet Wet, Love Is All Around. For a pound. All the fun of the fair. Right. Um, that came out of a charity shop, incidentally. So... Um, yeah, so I've got two markets, two CEX and charity shop, not doing too badly. These three came out of a charity shop, which is great, because I always like to make sure my money goes to the right places. I don't mind giving my money to Cashcon Generator and CEX, but I'd much rather went to charity shops. Um, so I've got these three. Now, the first two games I've got here were priced at 149 and there was another game which was in their five for a pound section. Now, uh, because there weren't any other games in there that I wanted, uh, we sort of negotiated and basically did a deal where... Um, I got these three for 99p each. I think it was about right. So, up first, uh, Colin McRae Dirt on the Xbox 360. These are all 360 games. And again, very nice condition. The manual, I, I'm so surprised with the manuals uh, this week, this this video. So many good condition manuals inside. Moan a lot, we don't get manuals. But these are all fabulous examples of them. I uh, do love the Colin McRae series. Always love the Colin McRae series since the... Um, PlayStation 1 days so that was very nice to pick that one up um, big fan of this series if you saw my video earlier in the year about game series I love this is Need for Speed Pro Street on the Xbox 360 which I think is the fourth Need for Speed game I've now got on the 360 again lovely condition on the inside uh, it also comes with the um, EA official gaming guide for 2007-2008 which I suspect is full of football games now what we got? We got Rock Band. We got um, Battlefield Bad Company, uh, Burnout Paradise, Mercy Two, World in Flames, The Orange Box, Army of Two, Need for Speed Pro Street, Medal of Honor, Airborne, The Simpsons Game, Skate, yeah, loads of sports games, NBA, Madden, NHL, NASCAR, uh, FIFA, and Tiger Woods. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Welcome to the world of electronic arts. Well, just full of sports games. So that was 99... Well, so it should be 149, but I got that for 99p. Quick look at the back of the box. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And then the other game, which we, we sort of agreed to buy as part of the agreed to 99p, uh, is a game I've already got on the Wii, which is Get Fit with Mel B. Which looks absolutely unused which you would expect uh, comes with uh, manual oh God, sorry about that <laughs> everyone listening to the earphones ah! um, a free fitness uh, first five day membership which I can't read because the writing is I mean that is a say small print I mean ludicrous print would be more appropriate I can't tell what date that expired I have to get a magnifying glass or some new glasses I'm, I'm getting to the point now where I'm some of this stuff, Mr. Bear asked me to read something earlier off a box, and I was like, what does it say? And um, I, if that's that's a sign my eyes are getting worse. Um, and they weren't great to start with, which is why I've been wearing these. And then there's a, a Get Fit With Moby website thing as well. Um, I think I mentioned this when I did the Wii video, but, you know, there's... Yes, three different... Three different Melbys? I don't know. But that's another Kinect game for my Kinect collection. There's the back of the box. 
I wish there were four of the games that only cost me 20p, but instead cost me 99. And now finally on the Xbox 360, a game I have been searching for for quite some time. So much so that a few months ago, I was in my local chip shop, where they refused to give me free chips after sending them I was YouTube in the month of November. I've not been back since. Um, and I was going through CX stock at one of my local, local stores, and it said it had this game in stock. I thought, brilliant. This, this was 6 o'clock on a Friday night after they'd shut. By the time I got there, 10 o'clock the next morning, the game had gone. What stellar title? And you already know it's not going to be a stellar title when I say it like that. What stellar title could I be possibly be talking about? None other than Sesame Street Season 1 on the Kinect. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't even looking for it. And then all of a sudden, by complete accident, I actually found it in the CEX two disc it's meant to be very very good it's like an interactive tv program it actually uses uh if i remember something correctly season 42 of sesame street i think we've just gone past 50 years haven't we now uh you're sitting going have we <laughs> do i care um yes uh and it sort of used that as interactive and, and basically i've read some reviews about it online it's been very very good uh, and there's also something you can, uh, if it's still working, you can go onto online and download an application. You can watch old classic Sesame Street episodes. Because I don't know about you, but you know I did grow up with Sesame Street quite a lot when I was when I was younger. And just say so you can use use uh, view classic Sesame Street clips. And there's Bert and Ernie. There's Elmo on the back. Uh, that was two quid. Yes, I paid two quid for that. But um, it's it's I don't. I've been after that for ages. It's meant to be very very good. So. And it's a connect game. So those were picked up on Friday the 27th of December. And the following day I went out uh, on one of my, <clears throat> I call them epic trawls, where I go a bit further afield and uh, try and find something. I did a bit of research first. I always try and do a bit of research to make sure if I'm going somewhere, it's going to be worthwhile me going. Because if, if, I, if I turn up and the stuff isn't there, then I get a bit annoyed. Or if I go without knowing and spend all the time, time going down there, it's a waste of time. So I'm going to find something to make sure that the journey's going to be worth it. So I went down to Worcester on the 28th, which was a Saturday. Uh, because we've had train strikes here, I think about up until about two weeks before Christmas. And I did plan to go to Worcester before Christmas. They got a nice run of charity shops down there, which turned out to be an absolute waste of time. And they have um, a couple of uh, cash con generators and there's a CEX in town. Uh, as a game store as well for modern games, but they haven't got um, even when game were getting rid of the last generation stuff. This one because it was a small store had already gone past all that. They got rid of all that stuff ages ago, so there was no need for me to go in there. And it's about eight quid on the train return, and on the return I can come back into one of my local towns and sort of jump off there as well. So I've well got to, got Worcester and somewhere else. There's two lots here, but I'll do um, this lot first. And I just made sure that before I went down, there was some stuff that would make the journey worthwhile. And when I got there, I actually found stuff that was even better. <laughs> even better than that. Even better. So I've got Worcester and Stourbridge here. Uh, I can't remember. Honestly, I'm just going to just throw stuff at you and say I've got this. Here we go. And it's off the pile as it comes along. So uh, N64, first of all, for £2. Um, this is the Nagano Winter Olympics. By Konami. If you notice that. And I, I always look look for... You know, game developers or you know, people like that behind this. There's no point in showing the back because it's warning, isn't it? Um, but I always look at things like that and think, well, maybe that might be pretty good. I don't know. I don't think I've got I've got quite a few skiing games looking at uh, Also on the N64, um, and I was getting surprised that this came from uh, an old software house. If you know your 8 bit stuff and those of you who collect Hit Squad games at the moment, which is probably half the internet, um, hit, you know, Ocean games, and this is Mission Impossible bit of a sticky label on the front cover there but this is uh it's got the paramount film logo on as well um i'm not sure if it's linked based on the films or on the film maybe that's i've been going 21 years if that's the case um but yeah that was two quid and again two quid n64 cartridge can't pick that up i'm pretty sure i had it on another system but i haven't i, I thought i had it on them um, Oh, yeah, I've got it on I've got it on the PlayStation 1, so I have. There we go. So, yes, it's on the PlayStation 1 as well, but get it, get it, for, for two quid. Now, for 250 one of the greatest tennis games ever made on the Super Nintendo. Super Tennis. 
I don't think there have been many better tennis games. Probably Virtua Tennis. Since this game came out, that has captivated the dullness and boringness of tennis in all its glory. Because I don't like tennis. But that was 250. Um, and I played that when it first came out. Mate of mine had it when he had Super Nintendo. Absolutely brilliant. It's it's one of the best tennis games. If you like tennis games, you like tennis. Why haven't you got that? Honestly. Um, interesting enough, you, you notice there it's, it's actually clear on the top. When I got this, went to Worcester, they got um, all their retro stuff in a big curver box. A plastic container, plastic box. And all the other Super Nintendo cartridges, someone had written across the top in permanent marker what they were. So obviously when you like store your cartridges down like that or you store them like that, you write the name across the top. Um, you can see what it is. I mean, most people nowadays put a sticker across it like I do. But no, somebody had written. So I was very glad I hadn't gone down there to buy Spider-Man and X-Men on, on the Super Nintendo for £8. Because when I got there, the cartridge was not only yellow, but somebody had written Spider-Man slash X-Men across the top of it. And it's like, oh, oh. no. It may have come off. I, I don't know. But I'm thought, I, I didn't travel all that way to buy that game. I didn't. I went to buy that game. Anyway, judging by the state of some of them, I'm glad I didn't make a special journey for those other games because I'd said I don't want them. Uh, Game Boy stuff. Yeah, Game Boy again. Why do they keep buying Game Boy games? Uh, Wave Race. You see that? There we go. Wave Race. Sort of. Um, yeah, so that was a pound. I mean, I love the Wave Race games. I've got the N64 version. I've got the GameCube version. Uh, absolutely love them. Don't know why they don't make any more. And then this one was one pound fifty. And it came with a one of those lovely plastic Game Boy cases, which I managed to open yesterday. Never work with animals, children, or plastic cases. Anyway, you might be able to see it, it says tennis. <laughs> £1.50. I managed to open this yesterday. Oh, I don't know. One of these days. So yeah, £1.50 for that. But again, all this was found by simply you know looking through CEX stock. I know, and, and, and don't quite, you know, always quote me on this one, it's not 100% accurate because there was one game they couldn't find when I got there. I, I went down with, I was lucky, I went with a list of uh, one, two, three, five, six, seven or eight games and one of them I couldn't find. Okay, fair enough because I don't put this stuff on display anymore now. They only put the really expensive stuff on display cases, everything else is sort of put in behind the scenes. And this is quite a big store in Worcester to be fair. So, yeah, they couldn't find one game, which is, I said, it's not too bad. I've got the other ones. But it's always worth, you know, just checking to see if they've got anything. A couple of loose Master System games. When have I showed? I wonder if I show any Master System games. I don't think I have ever. So this is California Games. Uh, this was one fifty. A game I've played many times on the Commodore sixty four and on the Amiga. Uh, but yeah, really nice, nice clean cartridge. I'd like to see that nice clean cartridge. That's what I'm saying. You know, with the cost of these being quite low, especially Master System stuff. Some of the Master System stuff is incredibly cheap to pick up uh, if you can find it local to you. Um, this one, not quite as nice a bit of a residue on the front of it, but quality game. Not so good on the Master System, I've heard, but anyway, it's Strider. There we go, and that was three quid, which is probably, I think, the most expensive purchase out of a lot of all this stuff you're going to say. Um, but yeah, I was, again, three quid. I, I, I'm sort of thinking maybe I should buy more cartridge based stuff next year if it's as cheap as that. If it, if they have these items already available. Great. Um, PlayStation 1 game. This came out of Cash Converters and this is Viva Football uh, from Virgin Interactive, which I know absolutely nothing about. Um, oh, it has got a broken box. That's a little crack across the front. It's also got one of the world's heaviest manuals. Look at the size of that. Gee, that, there's some weight in that. There is absolutely some weight in that. There's the disc. I'm going to hold it together because the box is about to fall apart my hands there's a crack across the front and there's the back of the box which you are not be able to read so I'll just read a quick line of it. it says there's a true celebration of the beautiful game over a thousand teams lifted from past World Cup tournaments a thousand teams past World Cup tournaments is that, is that about right? I don't know were there that many great World Cup teams? The opportunity to play as the Algerians of 1982, possibly. I don't know. Uh, but that was a uh, 99p. 
and in these two were one of the other reasons I went down to Worcester in the first place there's a shop down there which is like a let's say a cash generator type place and I noticed they were selling these games on Amazon for considerably more than I bought them for and they were sort of charging I don't know what they but postage on top I thought well I know where that is I must well, if I go down there tomorrow, I'll have a look. So I went down there, and lo and behold, they got these games on the shelf. Um, not greatest condition, but I think they'll pass muster. So on the master system, uh, this is Trivial Pursuit. So you can see Hanger is intact. Okay, some sticker residue there, which has been there a very long time. But I don't think this is the right box for it, because the cartridge is very, very loose inside. But it's got the manual to go with it. But yeah, I don't think it's the right box for it. I think there's nothing. It's also got the blue Sega label on the side as well, which I've mentioned before. And uh, you can have up to six players on this. I do like a bit of Trivial Pursuit. This was 99p. And they were asking far, far much more for it on Amazon where they were trying to sell it. 99p. And then uh, also in the same shop, and again, which they were trying to sell on Amazon, is uh, Populous from the creative mind of Peter Molyneux. Who went on to build football stadiums in Wolverhampton? Um, yeah, complete manual, uh, complete cartridge. <laughs> Glad at least not in half. Uh, there is actually another manual, and I think there's a Dutch. There's the English manual there, and there's a Dutch version underneath it. Someone's tried to eat the top corner of the box. You can just see there. You can see it there. Someone's tried to eat that bit. Uh, but that was one ninety nine, and again, they were trying to sell that for far, far, far more. Um, on Amazon so yeah so two matter system games for three quid boxed and complete and I would say in reasonable can reasonably good condition uh, then in Star Ridge in cash converters my cartridge based journey continued and more success with PGA Tour Golf 3 on the Mega Drive well look I just see this is, this is it Unbelievable. Now I've already got a uh, PGA Tour Golf 2. But this was see, boxed and complete. I know it's a golf game. 99p. Complete. And it's got the hanger on it as well. See? Hangers intact, manuals intact, cartridge intact, case. That's not a battery, that's probably the best one of the three in terms of condition. 99p. You'd be a bit stupid not to. I don't. I mean, there's no value in them, but you know, if you're you're a fan of the if you're a fan of the old games and you want to pick stuff up like that, as Mr. Punch would say, that's the way to do it. Right, and then on to the last section. Blimey, well, getting there, nearly there. Don't worry, not long to go now. Go and do your other stuff. Uh, what have we got? So for one pound fifty on the Wii, this is just going to be random, okay? Random. Uh, one pound fifty on the Wii is Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen, which means I'm now just missing Transformers Prime on the Wii to complete the Transformers games. This manual is bent, um, but believe me, they had three copies of this game, and this was the best one. I couldn't even make one good copy out of all three of them. That's how bad it was. Uh, no fan of these. Transformers films or anything like that so uh, but I hadn't got it so there we go uh, for £1.50 from a charity shop I've already got this on the Playstation 2 and this is Leisure Suit Larry Magna Cum Lord or Laude Lord I don't know L-A-U-D-E you spell out you want to do uh, Uncut which is a terrible game uh, surprisingly the manual is clean and the page is not stuck together and it's just a horrible. If you remember, if you remember from my uh, age range, uh, leisure, suit, leisure suit Larry games were like a click and point, point and click adventures, text adventure type things, which were very, very um, adult. And and this apparently just takes it in the other direction, completely the other end of the scale. Uh, ironically, in the same shot, they were also selling Playboy the Mansion, which I've also got on the the Xbox. Bought that years ago. In less enlightened times than we live in now. Um, but yeah, this looks actually horrible, and it is meant to be horrible. I think there's another. One. I think there's a. Is it a, is it, is it a PC game? Leisure Suit Larry Box Office Bust or something. 
It's meant to be even worse than that one. Yeah, anyway. £1.50 that was. Uh, for £1.50. And um, this is the last on the Wii. And this is the last game of that genre that was released over here. Uh, it's Madden 10. Uh, there were Madden 11 and 12 which were released in America and Canada. But this was the last one that came out of here in the UK. Just give you an idea of how highly regarded that has been. That was sitting in, in Worcester's CEX for about two months. <laughs> before I went and picked it up. I was after it ages ago. I thought, oh, they've got it. Finally, someone's got a copy of it. Um, yeah, Troy Polamilaru for the, of the Pittsburgh Steelers and Larry Fitzgerald of Arizona, uh, who is still playing. And I think he's he's mulling over whether he's going to play again next season or not. Uh, but you like American football, like I do. This is ideal. If you don't like American football, then I'll move on to something else. Um, this week's Boo Boo, because occasionally there is a Boo Boo, uh, and this is uh, Excite Truck, which I've already got. So if anybody wants a copy of Excite Truck, do let me know. What's what's even more bizarre was I tried to buy this a few weeks ago and I refused to pay one pound ninety nine for it. Uh, I paid one pound fifty for this and now I've realised on the way back home on the train I've already got it. Uh, this one I hadn't seen before and I picked it up purely because I hadn't seen it before but also the fact it's got Capcom on the front of it and this is on the Xbox and this is without warning you can see the Capcom logo at the bottom as I said sometimes I'm just attracted to games that I, I've never seen before but you know developers and, and publishers behind them I mean it's, you know Capcom wouldn't publish rubbish would they <laughs> so without warning again that's all the manuals been intact here as well it looks like one of these sort of uh, shooty games that was so prominent on the Xbox. I'm pretty sure fifty percent of the Xbox's output was shooters. Um, but yeah, it was one pound fifty. That was uh, this one. I got out cash converters in Worcester, and this was uh, this is We Sing Pop on the Wii. I paid one forty nine for this. The more enlightened amongst you will know that this at the moment is selling in its CEX for eight pounds. So a pretty good pick up there. Uh, show you the inside. And I think I've got I've got Wee Sing. We Sing It's just around the corner, I can't quite see it. Yeah, We Sing, We Sing Uncle, We Sing Robbie Williams, and now We Sing Pop. Would you like me to read out some of the titles on the back? Because I know you get a great kick out of this. Um, so six de decades of music with original artists and videos Adele rolling in the deep Bruno Mars just the way you are Coldplay clocks Cindy Lauper girls just want to have fun Enrique Iglesias hero Fergie big girls don't cry flow rider featuring David Guetta club can't handle me Florence and the machine uh, dog days are over Hanson mm, bop Ooh, no uh, Jason Murrs I'm yours Jesse J, nobody's perfect. Kellis, milkshake. Uh, Lady Gaga, bad romance. Lady Gaga, born this way. Uh, Nelly Furtado, I'm like a bird. No Cole shirt singer, don't hold your breath. Outcast, hey ya. Owl City, fireflies. Peter Andre featuring Bob Ranks, mysterious girl. God, they were really scratching the barrel on this one, weren't they? Uh, Pussycat dolls, when I grow up. Not, don't ya? Unbelievably. Uh, Rihanna, don't stop the music. Scissor Sisters, I don't feel like dancing. We'll sit down then. Uh, Sonny and Cher, I got you, babe. The Killers, when you were young. Uh, Tiny Temper featuring Eric Turner, written in the stars. Vanilla Ice, Ice Ice Baby. Village People, YMCA. Wet, 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 love is all around. Wham, I'm your man. And Wretch 32 featuring example with Unorthodox. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. It's an eight quid gaming CX. I picked up for a fraction of the price. It wouldn't be the end of your videos if we didn't have a video relating to some of my personal obsessions. So say hello on the Wii to Pony Friends 2, which shockingly was produced, was uh, published by Ados shortly after they were um, acquired by Square Enix. Um, the last time I tried to buy this game, uh, the guy in another cash converter, if you sell it to me, saying that the disc could look like the Pony Friends been kicking it around the stables. This one, I must be honest with you, isn't great. Uh, I think it'll work. Um, I'm hoping it'll work, so I don't have to try and buy this again once it's bad enough. Um, but yeah, uh, again, one pound forty-nine from Cash Converters CX at the moment, selling this for four quid. So there's two games there for three quid, and I've. I've, I've 
you know, it would have cost me 12. Uh, this one cost me 99. I think CX sold it for 150. It's also on the Wii, and this is Sudoku Ball Detective, which basically tries to. Um, look at the state of the there. Look at that character there. If he wasn't wearing a syrup and a fake moustache, you'd not be. I mean, it looks horrible, doesn't it? All of them. Every single one of those people on the front looks horrible. Uh, Sudoku Ball Detective is Sudoku with a twist. Wow. You thought chess was boring? Play your favourite puzzle game in a completely new entertaining detective scenario inspired by murder and mystery games and famous English detective stories. I can hardly wait. No, I can, actually. Um, yeah, this was, I said, 99p uh, from uh, Cash for Goods Place. Uh, 150 CX sell at full, but you don't see it very often. I've never seen it before, so that was worth picking up. Same shop as well, picked this up for 99p, which CX also sell for four quid. And this is on the Xbox 360, and this is The Godfather Part 2. Or actually, the, just The Godfather 2, not Part 2, because that will be relating to the film. But I did enjoy the original Godfather game, which I think I've got on both the PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Act like a mobster, think like a Don. Not Bradman. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm not quite sure what that's going to entail, if it's going to be any good or not. Let's see. Now, another PlayStation 2 game, and this one I picked up from uh, the last charity shop I went in of the day. And I don't usually have any games. I was like, oh, no games as usual. What's the point coming in here? And just as I was walking out, they got at the bottom, we got, you know, these all got these shelves in charity shop with knickknacks on them and bits of junk and. You know, little teapots and glass vases and things like that. And right at the very bottom, we've got a load of games across there with a little sign on me saying, all Wii, PlayStation, Xbox games, 50p each. Hello. Show me the bucket. Well, show me the shelf. Show me the shelf. So we have a look at the shelf. What's in there? Absolutely nothing uh, except Beyond Good and Evil, which I got for 50p. Might be the pickup of the weekend, that one, possibly. I don't know. Uh, again... I've heard so much about this game, so I've been after it for ages, but it's about three or four quid, and sometimes you can't find it in CEX either. I've never seen it in a charity shop for, well, ever, actually. First time I've ever seen a copy of the game outside of CEX. So for 50p, um, yeah, and that's meant to be a really, really good game. Should have been the first of series of games, I understand. It wasn't very successful. So, yeah. Um, another CEX pickup PlayStation 2. I got this because of the cover. I thought it looked quite fun, and also the fact it's by Namco. And this is I Ninja. And looks like it's been into game at some point. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. Been somewhere. Someone's put a white label on it. But it, it looks quite cute and fun. And I'm not buying PlayStation 2 games anymore. But um, I bought this and thought I've not got many PlayStation 2 games. This was before I bought before I bought Beyond Good and Evil. And after I remembered, I bought SingStar 90 the day before. Which is going to give me a real problem now, because I've got nowhere to put these, the, those three PlayStation 2 titles on my shelf. Three to go. Stick with it, three to go. A GameCube. And let's say hello to Dave Mirror 2, Freestyle BMX. And again, nice manual. Nice looking manual on the inside of this one. Beautiful, some beautiful looking manuals this week. Um, I don't know much about this one. Obviously, it says they're the bonus Nintendo GameCube feature with two additional tracks and high resolution graphics. Wow. So, if you what compared to what? Was there a Spectrum version released? I don't know. I mean, you'd have thought if you're buying a GameCube game, you'd be getting super high resolution graphics, wouldn't you? Anyway, that's the back of the box. Uh, yes, yeah, so that was uh, 150 that was. One of the cheapest GameCube games I could find. Um. But also at pick up this was one pound from a charity shop and I've already got um, the 2009 version of this so this is the 2010 one which I've never seen before I've, I keep seeing it in, in stock in various CX is nowhere near here uh, I never sat on the shelf before and this is Julian Michaels uh, fitness ultimate in 2010 by 505 games we mentioned before they did the Mel B game was it or was it uh, maybe not the Mel B game can't remember. We've done a 505 games game game today anyway. And there's the back of the box. You too can look like that. 
I find it fascinating to say what he says, work out it in all new exotic locations from rugged beaches to jungles. It's going to make absolutely no difference when you're on a balance board in your own living room. What bloody scenarios on the back there? It could be out of space for all you care, as long as you're doing the exercises. Um, but I have seen something about, about this. But yeah, plan your custom training routine for up to six months. I might start using some of these after Christmas. It is after Christmas, in the new year then. Because I've eaten an awful lot. And then finally, the last game for this uh, end of year edition, and this is uh, on the Wii. And I've said it before, and a couple of people have also said it before as well. Keep your eye open for these end of, you know, the, these later release titles that are so generic that you think, oh, no point in picking that up at all. Waste of time. Uh, this is FIFA 15 on the Wii, which I picked up in cash converters of 49 pence. Okay. And again, absolutely immaculate condition. Uh, just so you are aware at the moment, CEX currently uh, accept this for trade at £7. They sell it for 12 So cash converters, um, you've dropped a clanger on that one, I'm afraid. It's just slight, it's a slight clanger. But yeah, I said it before, say it again. Always keep your eye open for these later year sports title releases because some of them there are value in them particularly this one uh, because obviously 15 uh well i mean i know i've already checked um i bought a game a few weeks ago on the wii u and wii u wii where you came out after the wii uh your shape fitness 2013 so by the fact they were still producing 2015 fifa games for the wii they're still bringing out just dance games for it is there another one due next year i think 2020 another one coming out um which just increases the library by another game but yeah so keep your eye open for those because some of them do have value and like i said that one there and if you couple in the fact that that one there with the two one pound fifty games from cash converters for we sing pop and pony friends two three games there i spent three pound fifty on or three pound forty seven on and if you went to buy them in cex you would get a pound change from 25 quid i think if you traded them in uh you'd get something like 12 quid anyway so even if you spent three pound 50 and got 12 quid back for it that ain't too bad i know a lot of you sort of work on those those numbers when you're looking for stuff for trade so yeah but if you're looking for collecting even better because i was never going to pay 12 quid for that so for 50p brilliant and that's it so all that lot there cost me a smidgen under 40 nicker um and i think yeah some great games there. It certainly inspired me to now sort of reassess where I'm collecting. I'd like to sort of maybe get some more cartridge based stuff because I do have the space for that. Obviously with the Retron 1, uh, maybe trying to explore getting some more NES cartridges as well. That'd be great. Maybe in some American ones, which would be even better. And obviously cheeky trying to fill this giant wall of white behind me. I did say white, as well as my other collection. But yeah, so there we go. Um, that's it. So I'm going to stop talking now and let you get on with what you're doing. So um, once again, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will continue to follow me into 2020 because uh, it's been a fabulous experience in 2019. And I hope, uh, you know, personally, it's not been a great year uh, away from this. It's not been a great year at all. Um, but there, you know, there has been some light at the end of the tunnel in, in the last few weeks. So, you know, maybe next year will be because 2018 was a great year. 2019 was a horrible year. I'm hoping 2020 will be a bit of a bounce back year. And, and pers from personally speaking. Um, we should hope for that and obviously I hope the channel continues to grow in 2020 I hope to get to meet more people I met some great people this year I'm going to get to meet more people next year to get out some of these events continue collecting continue producing these videos for you which I know you, a lot of you like to listen to uh, a lot of you to, it's, it's great that you do uh, so what I'd like to say at the moment um, first of all is wish you all a very very happy new year I uh, hope the 2020 is very prosperous and safe and caring to you and uh, that I do hope to see you back in the gaming pantry next year. But for now, thank you very, very much indeed for watching. As always, do take care and bye for now.